Hey guys, what's up? So in this one, we are going to be talking about what happens when we send a user a reset email and also when we send them like a verification email. So currently what we are doing is we send them, let's say they request for a password reset. We send them a link and then we, con we construct a link and then send them this link. So that link is basically a link to a view on our server, which is good. But then you notice that when they are verifying, we come over here and then we check if the, the tokens they are sending us are correct and then we send them JSON. But normally what we will be doing here is not actually send JSON. It would be to one, if the app, if, if the app is running on a, a website, we would be returning a redirect. So a redirect to that website. So this means that we need a way to know which URL to redirect to when we get to this point here. So let's say everything was successful and we are not sending back this JSON again, but we want to return a redirect. We want to know where to redirect to. So how we can do that is we can of course we can of course know where our front end application will be and then we can return a redirect to that and maybe to a, to a specific view or a specific route to that front end and also send this information in the route URL. But also we also want to keep in mind that this very API can be used by mobile apps and mobile apps use a different scheme that's not HTTP or HTTPS. So we normally would not be returning the same redirect we would want to return to. So what you can do now is we can have a fallback. So a fallback can be where we redirect every time. So we can have what I may call a fallback. That would be where like the URL we redirect to by default. So this can be like our front end application. So here I'm going to export a variable. So this can be something like front end URL. So let's say our front end URL is on localhost port 3000, something like that. But it can really be anything. Let me have HTTP here because it's needed. Okay. But if we have, let's say, a, a full domain, we can keep it there. And then also, to also cater for mobile apps, we also need to set a scheme here. So I'm going to also export this. Export. So let's say our app has a scheme. Let's say app scheme. So with app scheme, we would have something like, so the app schemes, they can be very custom. So here we can even have anything depending on how you define your scheme. So we can call it like income expenses. And then once we have this, so if we go to steal our, let's see our authentication, then views. So here we can make the front end send for us the URL that they would want us to redirect to when we finish uh, verifying on the server. So we can go to the serializers and then go to our reset password, request password. And then we can also set another, another property for redirect URL. So that's going to be serializer.sharefield and it can have a max length, doesn't matter, say like this. And then we can make it required false because we are going to have a fallback anyway. So required false, so that if, if a user doesn't supply it, it doesn't complain. So when we are sending an email, we also can send the redirect URL. So here we can add another string and then have something like, so we can send them the redirect URL and have something like redirect URL. So we can set this to, to a redirect URL we define. So let me have a redirect URL variable here. So redirect URL. And then once we have this, now we need to define it, of course. So we can come like here and then define redirect URL. So this will be, we want to check if the user is sending us a redirect URL still. So we can do request.data.get. So we called it your direct URL. So we want to make sure the user is sending it. So I'm going to have a fallback here so it doesn't crash. Okay, so when we have it, then we will send it. Otherwise, we will send an empty string. So that does it for the first part. So this will work when a user requests an email. We make sure that we are sending them the redirect URL. Otherwise, it will be empty. So this does it for sending the email. But what about when they click on the link in the email? So everything else will work the same. But when we come here on the on the password token check API, instead of returning this response, I'm going to first comment it out and then we are going to be returning a redirect. So here we can have a return 
Remember, we have already defined our front-end URL and our application, our mobile app scheme. So since here, so since in the email, we are sending it as a query string. So if you can see, where is it? We can get it here by doing redirect URL. So we'll be getting redirect URL, or that's how we called it. So redirect URL. So meaning it's gonna be empty or it's gonna have a value if a user had if the front end had sent it, so if the mob if it was sent from the mobile app. So once we have this, instead of sending this JSON, here we can return a redirect. So I'm going to import so so I'm going to import redirect here. So from Django, like that. So we want to return this so we can come over here in the token check. So if let's say the token is not valid, we can return return a redirect. So redirect, of course, takes in where we are going to be redirecting to. So we want to redirect to the, so we want to return a redirect to our redirect URL, but we want to first make sure that the redirect URL is there. So we can have an if statement here. So we can check if the redirect URL is there. So we can easily check for the length. So let's check if it's greater than three, but you can have your custom check there. So when it's there, we want to return a redirect to that. So we do that by returning redirect. So we want to return to the redirect URL, okay? And then we can actually concatenate here some other variables. So we can send other information, let's say something like valid, something like token valid, we can set it to false, such that a user, such that on the front end or on the mobile app, you know what to tell the user by seeing what we send you here. So that means that we are not returning JSON anymore, but a redirect. So otherwise, if things are good, we want to return the same redirect. And then we, we, of course, we go here. So what you can do is actually have the same. So we go to the redirect, then we can set, we can send something like token value equals true. So let's take away the success. Then you can have like an and if you have a custom message you want to send. And here we want to use equals Okay, so we also want to send all the information we've been sending. So we say, and token equals, let's see, equals, we want to make sure this is a query string, so add it there, say that on the front end, it can be picked. Okay, let's have an and there, and then also have a query string, then we set the token to the token. So these, of course, are dynamic. So we want to make sure they are being sent in correctly. So this is okay. And message up to here, it's okay. Up to here, things are okay. So we want to separate that. And then we want to add another string here. So looking good. So even here, we want to add another string. Okay, so that looks good to me. So since we are returning a redirect, it's not going to be 200, of course, it's going to be a 301 or 302. So, so let's close this here. So this means that now we return a redirect to our redirect link that the user sent us. Otherwise, we need to send an error. So what you can do is you can actually return the same re URL when we throw an exception. So you can come over here and then have that one in there. Okay, so if I do this, we want to make sure that we are formatting things properly. One problem that I'm seeing here up front is that Django by default doesn't allow you to, to redirect to protocols that don't that is that are not HTTP and HTTPS. So what you want to do is you want to specify your own custom redirect class. So up to here, I'm going to have a class custom redirect. So this class is going to inherit from HTTP response permanent redirect so we can also import that one from http so from django.http so here we can specify we can customize the protocols we want so we can have allowed schemes and then we can have a list so since in the environment we specified our mobile app scheme we can bring it in here and also accept it so that will be environment.get so let's see how we are calling it so we're calling it app scheme so we want to bring that in also have a comma and also have http of course and also https okay so that's gonna do so now since we are going to be using this we need to let's import os actually so since we are going to be using this we need to change the way we are handling the way we re redirect so coming back here 
where we redirect from so if we come here where we have our redirects let's see Doo -doo -doo -doo. we want to return the custom redirect everywhere so let's do that Doo -doo 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 -doo. even here so everything will continue work to, everything will continue to work as normal but if for some reason we don't have the redirect url then we can maybe send the user to our pages on the website so here we can have another else here so we can have like else so in this else we can do this we can return the same thing so that means the user didn't the front end didn't supply with us the redirect url of course we could enforce it but since we have the fallback for the let's say the website then it's okay so here we can have os.environ.get then we send our front end url so we can have it there so if it's a mobile app it's going to have a separate scheme like i said but the navigation will be handled by default so on our server when we return a redirect to something that starts with this app scheme and we have an, an and we have our app installed on the device the system will prompt it to open the link in the, inside the app okay so so looking good so let's go ahead and actually test out what we are making here and see if we have some other things we need to fix and how everything will be fitting together so if i come to the application again i can come to the reset email and then click execute so you will see that it sends it's they tell us that they have sent us the email but the process takes quite a bit so what i want to do is first change this so you can change that and make it a bit faster by running this process on a separate thread so if we go to where we are sending an email from that's in the utils.py i'm going to set up another thread here so i'm going to first need to get threading so import threading and then here i can have a class so this class is going to be email thread we inherit from threading a thread so in here we can have our constructor so dev in it so it takes itself and then other details that we'll be sending to the to the class so inside here we want to initialize the details to whatever is passed in then we call threading the thread then we call init so when we call init we need to pass self self and that's it so the next thing we need here is a run method so when we instantiate this class we instantiate this class and call start it's going to run everything in the run method as we've seen so here we can define a run so in the run we can call self.email dot send okay so we need to send this email details so here where we say email send we want to initialize the email so now we can call email thread so when you say email thread then you can instantiate it so you need to instantiate it with the email details so we need to send email here and then we need to have to call send we need to call start not send okay so this is going to span out the whatever is defined in this run so you want to make sure you call start and then you want to make sure that your run and the constructor are indebted on, on the same starting line okay so once we have this now we can come back and make another so now if we request again you will see that things are very fast meaning that our thread has been able to make that process faster for the user so now if i go to my email so if i can come over here you will see that i have this new email so when i click on it you will see let me remove this so when i click on it you will see that we have the normal the normal route but then we have a redirect a redirect url so currently the redirect url is empty that's because we didn't provide it but optionally a user can provide a redirect url so he can so in the not the user but the front-end developer can provide the redirect url by supplying it here so something like redirect underscore url so this can be any valid url so i'm gonna pick google one uh, let's say google.com so let's say they supply this or wherever the application is hosted let's say the domain of our website and then they request to reset so now if we go back to our, our api you see we have this new email you see we have this new email and this email has a redirect url so when a user clicks it you see we go back to the application but then we have an error so looks like we can't do get on a request so what we want to make sure is so what we want to do is go to our view and then see how we are handling that so if we come back to i think it's a gate yeah this one so you are doing dot get dot get so this should be get with all caps okay 
So if we come here and reload, let's reload it, you see that it takes us to Google. So it takes us to Google and then tells us that the token is valid and then takes us here. So this means that it can redirect to any URL you provide it. So let's say you have a front-end application, we are going to redirect to it and then say that this token is valid and then we are sending the tokens if you can see. So that means we have the encrypted one, encrypted ID and then the token. So the developer can pick them from the URL and send them back to our confirmation endpoints, which is complete, which is this one. Okay, so that looks good. If we don't provide it, for example, in the emails we did before, like this one, if we click on it, you will see that we have an issue. So we need to first check if we have uh, this string. So this, so if we can check on that, you'll see that we are trying to redirect URL, then add this. So we want to make sure that this is there. So otherwise we want to do a similar check. So we can bring this one down here before we do our, our our final return so we can check if it is there then we return that otherwise so down here we can have an else so else we want to return this one that goes to the front end url so i'm gonna copy that and also bring it here then make sure make sure that it is indented properly. But otherwise we want to first check if we have it. So here we can have if lane, if redirect URL and lane redirect URL, server so and there. So if that's the case, then we use the redirect URL that they provided. Otherwise we use the front end URL. So I'm gonna come here and click this very route. So when I click it, you see it takes me to the, lo the local host and then tells me that the token valid is false. Okay, so I guess that helps. So if a user supplies a custom URL, let's say they let's say we want to open up a mobile app when a user clicks the link in the email, then that means that we are going to be requesting this email. So here we will be requesting it with a custom scheme. So that will be something like let's say income expenses. So this should match with what we have on our server, but there of course will be other ways you can handle it, but we want to make sure that this one matches because this is what we defined that our server to redirect to. So make sure you have that. So instead of HTTP, HTTPS, you can have your own. And maybe if you're going to like a, a password reset confirm screen in the app, you can have your route here or the path to your navigation route. Okay, so you can have like reset. No, doesn't matter. So now if I click execute, you see it should send us the very email. We have the email and when I click on it, now this is the last one, you will see that the redirect URL is our custom scheme. So when I click on it, you will see that Django actually was able to redirect, but what happens is when it redirects here, the redirect is handled by the browser. So in this case, the browser is not able to handle this scheme, but when you're on a mobile app, your application scheme will be known by the system and it will be opened to the route that you specify here. So this is how you can redirect from your Django server to your mobile apps or to your front-end applications when people are like redirect. So when people are like verifying their accounts or they are resetting their passwords. So this is gonna do it for the video. I know it was too long, but I hope it was helpful. I'll talk to you in the next video. Thanks for watching, bye.